Next, we'll be back. Welcome back to the World Cycling Championships in Japan. We're at the Green Dome, Ayabashi Stadium, ready for the start of an All-American final in the women's match sprints. This is Renee Duprell of Seattle, now assured of her first World Championship medal. Her opponents leading here for the first of three laps is Connie Young of Indianapolis, the three-time world champion, looking for her first title since 1984. So Connie Young obliged to take the lead in this first match of three possible meetings in the final for gold and silver in the women's sprint. She's lost the opening draw, which means that in the next match, Rene Dupel will have to take the lead in the opening lap. Connie Young obliged to lead for the first full circuit of the track. Same rules apply here as in the men. And after they cross the start finishing line, then Young can try and work Rene Dupel into the lead. The advantage always comes from the back in sprinting. But I must say at the moment, Rene Dupel is allowing quite a lengthy lead here to Connie Young. And she has a tremendous pedigree in world cycling. The world champion. Three years running in 1982 in Leicester, England, then in Zurich, Switzerland, and in 1984 in Barcelona, Spain. She's also picked up a bronze medal in the Seoul Olympics, two bronze medals in the World Championships since then, and the silver in 1985. So you can't go much better than that. And Rene Dupel here has never beaten Connie Young in competition. Connie Young, perhaps better known throughout the world circuit as Connie Paris-Skavin, before she met and married Roger Young, who was twice an Olympic Games selection. He was also selected for the 1980 Games, but of course the U.S. didn't take part. Coming round to the end of the first lap, and Connie Young, well aware of the big gap here that Dupel is allowed to open. She's now stepping up the pace a little bit just to see if Dupel is playing close attention because concentration in sprint racing like this is absolute paramount. You watch your man, you don't allow your eyes to go anywhere else in the stadium. And Connie Young using all of the track here, constantly looking back over her shoulder to see the location. Dupel now taking a much closer order behind Connie Young. Will come round to the bell this time. She'll ride high on the track, both cyclists now, because the surprise must come underneath if they do this. Halving the chances of surprise at least, Connie Young has made no attempt indeed to get Dupel in front of her. It's a sign of extreme confidence. And so as Dupel rides the banking high in second place, she's going to use that wall now to gather as much speed as possible as Connie Young starts to accelerate inside 200 metres to go. And Dupel has given Connie Young an awful big lead here as they come off the final banking. It looks as though Connie Young is going to go one up. But look at the speed of Dupel. She comes on Young's shoulder very well indeed. She pushes her all the way to the line. A very close finish indeed. And 60 kilometers an hour over that last 200 meters. Well, that's about 38 miles an hour. Let's have a look at that sprint again. Now, at this point, Connie Young certainly seems to be in the lead and to go one up in the series. But look at this finish by Rene Dupel. Head down, arms bent, and giving it all the power she can find. And right on the line, she's going to win this by the width of half a wheel. And so, Dupel, surprisingly, has gone one up in the best of three in this final for gold. All right, we'll bring you the conclusion of this event in just a moment. But first, let's bring you up to date. Meanwhile, Connie Young has forced the best of three women's sprint final to a third and deciding heats by nipping Rene Duprel at the line in their second meeting. Now Young, who has been racing 20 years, has a decided edge in experience, but you got to believe Duprel will not be rattled. Again, a war of nerves in this race. The winner of this sprint will take the gold medal. Here again is Phil Liggett. And in this best of three final, this is the third match, and the draw has taken place, and Rennie Dupel has lost it, so she has to lead for this opening lap. Continue to roll around till the start-finish line is reached. So surprisingly, this series has gone one all, and Dupel has never, in fact, beaten Connie Young in the major series. Well, this is the third time in the history of the Women's World Championships that two Americans have come together in the final for gold and silver. It happened in Italy in 1976 between Sheila Young when she beat Sue Novara, and in 1982 at Leicester in England when Connie Young, her name was Connie Paraskevin then, she beat Sheila Young, who is now, of course, 
a sister-in-law. And all those names, they were originally speed skaters who rode bikes just for training. But now they have created the greatest period of match sprinting in the history of the United States. Approach to this panel, the best of three, both riders, one match each. So Rennie Dupel knows she has the beating of Connie Young, although she's never beaten her in a major championship before. Both riders rolling gently around on the Côte d'Azur, the blue ribbon at the base of the track. Remember that Dupel at the moment must lead to the end of this opening lap. And then she can try and manoeuvre Connie Young in front of her. Rolling nicely up the track now, keeping her eye all of the time on Connie Young because riders have been known to make their attack with a lap and a half to go or more and stay away to the finish. It is brain first and brawn second in match sprinting. You have to think your tactics all the way through. So two laps to go now. Rene Dupel still holding the lead, but now she wants to bring Connie Young much closer to her. She wants to know exactly where she is. She's trying to stand. If she can lock that bicycle up, and it looks as though Connie Young is through on the inside, but no. Chappelle there just cracked a little early. She's trying it again. And this time, Connie Young has given up. She now has got Connie Young exactly where she wants her in her sights. Quickening of the pace. New tactic from Connie Young. These track bicycles are a little bit more sturdily built than the road racing machines because they have to withstand a lot of g-force on the steep bank velodromes. And now Connie Young is deciding a faster pace is required perhaps to have the beating of René Dupel. Dupel is stalking her well, high on the banking. One and a half laps to go. Again, Connie Young riding high to force any attack on the inside of her. It's a little bit of a shame the flood lighting is directly overhead because the shadows are underneath the riders and many top sprinters simply watch for the movement of the shadow on the track. The bell this time. So, Rene Dupel has put Connie Young where she wants her. This is the way she beat her in the first match. She came from behind in the last 100 metres and again Connie Young has led out with a lot more speed in those legs this time. And she's opened a big gap over Dupel. Dupel's going to have to close this. And she's holding Dupel at about 15 metres at the moment, around the final banking. It looks as though Connie Young is going to make the decider a formality. She's a world champion again. Four world titles for Connie Young. And Rene Dupel wins her first silver medal. Two matches to one in favour of Connie Young. And so the final standings of the women's match sprints, Young, Duprell, and Razmate from the Soviet Union. Gold again for Connie Young. So gold medalist for the fourth time in Connie's career. No American in the modern era, not even Greg LeMond, has talked the world so many times. As usual, American women have performed well throughout the world championships. In the 30-mile team time trial in the Utsunomiya Nico Motorway, the U.S. team of Inga Thompson, Eve Stevenson, Phyllis Hines, and Maureen Manley finished second behind the Dutch team to win the silver medal. Now, this event requires an all-out effort of more than an hour. A tight formation, aerodynamic bicycles, wheels, and handlebars combined to shape a high-speed, human-powered missile. As the U.S. team approaches the finish, one racer drops off, but it's no worry. Only three from a team must complete the distance. In the team time trial, each rider takes a turn at the front, acting as a windbreak, while the others rest. Now, in the 45-mile women's road race, it was all 19-year-old Catherine Marsal of France. She was second last year. Marsal seems to be headed for a long reign as the world's best woman road racer. Marcel led from the starts and left this pack on the first climb. When she reached the finish line, she had time to do her winner's interview before the other riders even arrived. When the field rolled onto the finish straight more than three minutes later, Ruthie Mathis of Boulder, Colorado, in blue on the right of the screen, charged from the bunch and won the sprint for the silver medal.